Yo guys, welcome to RenderM, my name is Vieko and today I'm gonna be talking about studio lighting. Now, there's tons of information out there on how to do studio lighting and there's tons of high quality information out there. But is that information really matching your needs? Now that is the real question. Today, I'm gonna be showing you a way how I set up my lighting where I'm completely 100% aware of what I'm doing and what each light does because the main issue that people usually do, you see this light setup, you know, somewhere, you just toss in a million lights in your scene, you fire up your render and it looks like a complete mess. You have like 50 different highlights, you don't know what highlight belongs to which light, you're just trying to tweak them all and you're literally wasting time and spinning in circles. So I'm gonna be showing you a method that I use which will make your life easier. So the object that we're gonna be lighting is this booze crate. So as you can see in my scene, I have literally just that crate, a plane and the camera and nothing else. And now if I fire up my render, you can see that it is literally this. Now keep in mind, when it comes to studio lighting, it's super important the color of your background. I made a mistake, a cup, well, a lot of times, too many times actually, where I would need to have a product that was supposed to end up on a completely white background and I would be doing it, you know, in, in max and I would have, have like something like a gray background or even black background. And you know, the render would look really good, but once I've placed it on that white background in Photoshop, it looked like a complete disaster. So before starting anything, first determine your background, set that background in your max, you know, like in your rendering engine as a background and start from there. So first, let me th throw in a light. So let's just create something like this. So this is just a regular light. I'm gonna make it uh, a targeted light and let me select that target and I'm just gonna point it to somewhere to the center of my, of my crate. So let's put it here. So this is the result. Now, here is the deal. I know for a fact that I need to have this whole crate lit from the right, from the left, and I want to have some sort of rim lighting happening in the back. So at this point, I have defined that I want to have three lights in my scene. So I know that one light is supposed to be this one on the right. Let me first try to tweak that light solo. Let me just select this light and just move it around until I have some nice action going on in my scene. Let me just increase the intensity of the light. Let's say double, let's say 60. Okay, so let's see what elements are we getting. So I'm getting these, these nice contrasty bits here. I'm getting some nice highlights. I'm getting these highlights, which is really important. On the other hand, I'm getting those. And as you can see, this part is like pressed in. So it's a really good thing that from this light, we're gonna be seeing like kind of, you know, the shape of this whole element. But on the other hand, let's just try to experiment more and just move the light around just to see if maybe we can, you know, capture some more interesting detail. Okay, so I'm guessing the one that we had was actually pretty good. So, okay, you know what? I'm seeing this, this highlight here and I'm really liking it. So let's keep it like this. So we have some strong highlights here. Uh, our main highlight here on the handle, we have all the stop highlights here appearing, etc. So from this point, we're gonna create a second light. We want to see just what that second light does. We are not interested in that first light anymore. The only thing that we do know is that second light, we want it to light this front part. So I'm going to duplicate this light, just place it here, and I'm going to turn off this light here. So let's try to make this light look as epic as possible if you're creating just a solo image with this one light. Okay, so let me just tr see where we are at and what elements are we seeing. So, okay, it's really important. You can notice that there is this like, uh, like a bumpy beginning. It's also here. And if we don't place our lights carefully, you know, like the render can literally eat up this part. So we want all the details, all the shapes to be nicely visible whenever we are doing any sort of lighting. Let's see if we put this here. Okay, we're getting some strong light action, uh, but 
As you can see, that bumpy part is literally invisible here, so I'm just gonna throw it out to the back a little bit. And yeah, we can generally nicely see that part. We're also getting some highlights here. Let me just see what happens if I move the light a little bit to the back and push it to something like here. Let's see if I lower it down a little bit. We're getting this strong highlight happening here. Let's leave this as it is. So let's go and create our third light. So we're going to turn this light off and we're going to create this light. And, and this is going to be our rim light. So the rim light, we want it to show all those top little, you know, like highlights happening everywhere. And let's see what we can get with it. So if I turn on my backlight, OK, so now we're getting a lot of a lot of cool effects happening. So let's see, if I push it up, I want to get a really, really cool image with this effect. Okay, so take a look at this. When the light was down, you can see that all these parts, they were on a heavy highlight and they were literally burning. So they were almost identical as the background. So this is unfortunately not the effect that we want to achieve. Not to mention, all those highlights are actually blending the background with the tops of our handles, so this is also not the effect that we want to achieve. So let's just move it up and see where we will get to. As you can see, we're actually getting a lot of, a lot of new light entering this whole thing. So if I go here and... Um, okay, now this looks nice. Now look at this. We are getting, as you can see, the edges are not burned or anything. You can actually see an actual edge of the handle and we're getting these nice highlights. Not only that, we are getting all these edge highlights here appearing and these look very, very, very cool. And you can actually see the complete shape of our crate and this is definitely a bonus so let's see where we at now the only downside that i have here is i don't think we are seeing too much of this light so this part is kind of dark so let me just see if i can maybe do something with that part so if i kind of move the whole thing to the right okay now we're getting much more light let me just increase my light a little bit just so that it covers much more area now let's see where we at so i'm gonna try and turn on all three lights so here i can just turn on all of my previous lights so just as a reminder we we made this light we made this light and we made this light the whole point is you know try to keep your li lights as low as possible you know don't overcomplicate stuff and whenever you add lights, make sure to get the most of that light that that light can offer. So try to get all those super nice highlights happening everywhere on all the right places. You know, literally try to make like three epic images. Image from light one, light two and light three. All those three separately needs to look cool. So if you combine three cool images, you're going to get a mega cool image. Maybe. If now, if we turn on all three of them, now this looks really, really nice, but we have some issues. So I think that this top highlight, we know where this highlight is coming from. It's from our rim light. The other issue is this part is really dark and those fronts of the handles are really dark. So if now, if you want to tweak your lights, Try to see if you can maybe fix it with the lights that you already have. Don't just randomly throw in lights. So let's see where we are at. So first, let me first tweak that rim light. I don't like this massive, massive highlight happening. So I'm just going to go to local here and I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. Okay, just to make it a little bit smaller, we can still see the edge which is good. Everything is nicely lit. That is also good. Now, when it comes to that front part, I think we will need to add another light. So the light that we're going to be adding is going to be the light that is going to be affecting this part. I want to see a really nice highlight here and hopefully that highlight or that light will cover up for these dark areas. So let's take this and move it here. Just clone it. At that point, I'm just going to turn off all of my lights because this is the only light I'm having an issue with. 
So I'm just I just want to see what that light does. OK, so for now, it's definitely too strong. If I lower it down, you can see how this highlight gets mega, mega strong. So I'm going to lower the power, let's say to 20. So if I put it to 20, we are getting a highlight and we are getting that fill light that we were missing. The crate is fairly dark and that is OK because all the other lights are fairly bright. So let's see where we're at. If I turn on everything now, to look at this. So we got a nice highlight, the dark areas got fixed, and I think this looks generally okay. So I could tweak this crate for much longer from now on, but I wanted to show you guys a really important lesson, and that is to be aware of every tiny little thing that you're doing. So we placed each light separately, and we had in our minds absolute control of all the highlights that are happening. There were no surprises. You, we had no scenarios where, you know, something would be happening in the scene and you would be messing, you know, with your lights and something third will, you know, will start to move. So we didn't have these issues. The whole point is be completely aware of what you're doing whenever you're doing light setups isolate each light and see exactly what effect does that light do because that way you're gonna have much more control and you're gonna get to your desired effect much much faster and that's it for today guys i hope you learned something new if you have a cool studio light setup trick share it in the comments below see you in the next video bye